Hello, thank you for checking out this tutorial on how to implement metaballs with marching squares and linear interpolation in GameMaker. First of all, I'll be working in version 2022.3, but as long as you update it to version 2.3 and know about structs, you'll be alright following along. Even if you are in an older version, you should be able to adapt this code, although it'll be a little bit more difficult. The mathematical and programming concepts in this video are definitely beyond the beginner level, so I've linked some articles in the description which I found helpful when researching these topics, and they should act as a primer for all the maths and programming if you get stuck. Another great way to get unstuck is to find some other non-GameMaker language implementations. I know of a few in JavaScript, a language not too dissimilar to GML, which you could look at. Well. Before we begin, I should explain what metaballs are and how they work. A metaball is essentially a kind of spherical shape which has the ability to blend with nearby metaballs. The technique for rendering metaballs was pioneered in order to demonstrate atom interactions on Carl Sagan's show Cosmos in the 80s. Now it's also important to explain what the marching squares algorithm is. The marching squares algorithm simply defines contours for a 2D grid of data. For example, you might use this algorithm on a height map of terrain in order to draw a curve around an area of a certain height. Finally, I'll explain how we'll be using linear interpolation. The linear interpolation formula is used for estimating the value of a function between any two known values. We'll be using it to estimate smoother contours that aren't just snapped to the grid. So I'm going to get straight into GameMake and start setting up everything we need. Luckily, this implementation only needs one room and one object. So just make a room and an object and name them whatever you want. I've gone with rm underscore test and obj underscore control. The room can be whatever size you want, but bear in mind that you probably want your grid to fit fully in the room. Say your grid is 32 by 32. You want your room size divided by 32 to be a whole number. So in my case, um, 1024 divided by 32 is equal to 32 and 576 divided by 32 is 18. So that's fine. In the object, you're going to want a create event where we'll initialize all the variables. You'll need a step event where we actually move our metaballs around and also fill in our grid with data. You'll also need a draw event, which is where we work out our marching squares and in linear interpolation and actually draw them to the screen. So in the create event, we're going to start by defining our grid size. I've chosen a grid size of 32, and this is basically the resolution of our metaballs. And without linear interpolation, our lines could only connect between points 32 pixels apart. Now, we will define the width and height of our grid. This is basically how many 32 by 32 squares we can fit in the room. The reason we need to add one is that we always check if there's a ball to the right and to the bottom of a point. This means that we can start in the top left corner and not worry about what's to the left and up, but we need an extra column and row to check when we're in the bottom right corner and are checking what's to the right and bottom. Now we can simply use data structure grid create to make the grid. Uh, a DS grid is basically just a 2D array with better game maker implementation. Next, we will create a constructor function. This is a function that will generate new structs, in this case balls. Each ball struct just has an X position, a Y position and a radius. Let's also create a list data structure, basically a 1D array to store all the balls we create. We'll also have the variable len to store the number of balls we have. Now let's add two balls to the list. We'll pass balls as the ID of the DS list. Then using the operator new, we can create a new ball struct and pass in an X position, a Y position and a radius. In this case, we'll make one ball in the center of the room and another at the mouse position. That's it for the create event. So now let's move on to the step event. In the step event, the first thing we're gonna do is assign the second ball we created to the variable B. Now you need to pass in one as the second argument into this ds list find value function because ds lists start at zero so the second ball is actually number one next we can reference the x and y variables in that ball struct and just move it to the position of the mouse and we can also update that len variable we made earlier with the size of the balls list now we need to loop through all the points in the grid we'll do this with two for loops iterating from zero to width and zero to height Remember that i will be our horizontal position and j will be our vertical position. First, we'll figure out what the midpoint of the grid square is. Let's say we're at position 0, 0, the top left grid square. If we take that as a pixel position, we'd be in the top left corner of the square. However, what we want is the midpoint. So to convert the grid index to pixel position, 
we will just multiply it by the size variable we initialized in the create event, and then we will add half the size to place us in the middle of the square. Let's now just initialize this sum variable, which will hold the sum of the distance to every ball. Now we can loop through all of the balls by iterating through zero to len, which is the size of our list holding all the ball structs. Variable c will be the current ball we are referencing, and we'll work out what the distance is between the ball's position and the midpoint of the current grid square. Then we tackle one of the first complicated bits of maths. The way that our implementation of metaballs works is that we go through all the squares in the grid and work out how close they are to the balls. A point will have a high value if it is close to a lot of balls and a low value if it is far away. Then when we draw our lines, we can say that if the value in that grid square is above a certain value, it is inside the metaball and can be drawn. Although in our case, we're only drawing a line on the border of our metaballs. So to the sum value, we will add the inverse proportion of the distance. If we just did sum plus dist, the point would think it was more in the circle the further away it was. Instead, what we want is for the value in this grid square to be smaller if it is far away from the circle. However, normal inverse proportion would simply be one over a value. The reason we substitute one for the ball's radius is that we need the point to know if it is near to a big ball or a small ball. Finally, we'll set the value of this grid point to the sum value and quickly, we'll take away one from this value just to reduce the size of the ball so that they're a reasonable size. Now we move on to the final event, the draw event, which is unfortunately the most complicated event as it deals with both marching squares and linear interpolation. The first thing we're going to do is to make two functions. Firstly, we'll use another constructor function to make a vector 2, and this is just a structure that holds a point with an x position and a y position. If we have point p, let's say, Instead of having two variables, px and py, to hold its position, we make a struct p and give it an x value and a y value, which we can reference with p.x and p.y. Secondly, we're going to create a function called getState, and what this does is it converts a 4-bit binary number to base 10. Because our grid is made up of squares, we know that each square can only have four values, one for each corner. This is why we know our binary number will be 4-bit. Similarly, we know that it can only be over or under the threshold we set. This is why we can use binary. Now, what we can do is draw all of our ball structs. We'll loop through our balls list and then just use the gamemaker function draw underscore circle to draw the balls. These are not the metaballs, they're just the circle functions that feed into our metaball implementation. Next, we can again loop through all the grid points. However, this time we'll start one before the far right and far bottom. The reason for this is that when we check the value of the DS grid, we'll check the value of the position on its right and the position below. If we got to the bottom right grid corner value and checked to the right or below, we'd no longer be in the grid and we'd get an error. So that's what we're going to do now. In variables f0 to f3, we'll store the top left, top right, bottom right and bottom left values from the DS grid. Now we'll quickly define this function L, which takes two points A and B and linearly interpolates between them. If we return 0.5, we would see the result without linear interpolation because we would simply be assuming that all the lines connect to the midpoint. Again, converting from grid space to pixel space, we will make a pos variable, which is a vector2 struct. And then we can create variables a, b, c, and d, which store the interpolated value of where to draw the pixel space points. Next, we'll use the getState function to pass through the f0 to f3 variables. Remember, these values represent whether or not the point is in the circle as a binary value and return a base 10 value. Now we'll define w for width and m for multiplier. w will be the line width we will draw and the radius of the circles we will draw will be w times m so that we can see them. Finally, we'll use a switch statement to work out what lines we need to draw. If you look at the grid on screen, you'll notice that these are all the possible configurations of the corner points and the lines between them. However, they also correspond to a binary value. So if the top left corner is in the metaball, our value is 1, 0, 0, 0. This gives us a base 10 value of 8 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. So we look at configuration 8 and see we need to draw a line which separates the top left corner from the rest of the square. I'm hosting the project files online and the link is in the description. The reason for this is that actually the rest of the code is very tedious and so you could just copy and paste it. For the sake of an example, let's look at cases 1 and 14. In binary, these numbers would be 0001 and 1110. You'll notice that to separate the zeros from the ones, we need to draw the line in the same place. The same is true of separating the points in the metaball and the points not in the metaball. 
Therefore, we can draw the same line for both configurations. Now we can use our interpolated pixel space positions to draw a line between point C and D and draw a circle at the end point D. Now that we're done, let's run the game. So, as you can see, we have a metaball in the center of the screen and one following the mouse position. As the balls get closer together, they begin to merge, and then when they're overlapping, we get one large metaball. I'll show you what it looks like with a higher resolution and also with a lower resolution. And now I'll also show you what it looks like without linear interpolation. Well, I hope that those of you following along with this tutorial and implementing this for yourselves have achieved the same result as me and understand how everything works. If not, please drop a comment and I'll endeavor to fix a bug or explain myself better. Um, but that's it for this tutorial. I hope it's been helpful. I really want to make more of these kinds of videos, so please hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you're notified of any new videos, and leave a comment about the video, about my code, or with any ideas for future topics. That's all from me, and see you in the next video.